have uh, about 40 attendees right now. I think it's uh, I think yes. a reasonably good number to start. Uh, I'm sure yes. we'll be joining in, but I think we should we should go ahead. Um, yes. Welcome all uh, to the IDC talk number 24. Uh, and this talk we have our faculty speaker, Professor Ravi Poveya. I mean, very happy to do this because this is one speaker I don't need to give any introduction because all of us are, are uh, well-made or not so well-made or self-made, whatever, products of his and so I'm sure thousand plus designers he has, he has taught, mentored, created and and uh, it's, it's, it's such an honor to have Professor Ravi join us today um, and uh, very importantly I think is he is going to talk about a subject which is very close to his heart. Um, and, and and for this audience, I don't need to talk much about his profile. I'm sure all of us are very aware of his background and all that. Um, those who have not followed him probably the last few years, uh, which I found out from him and I found that there are some significant uh, uh, awards that he has won. And one that uh, is for the empowerment of persons with disabilities uh, under the category of Best Applied Research Innovation Award that he got in 2018. And also, uh, he got an award and a grant for as part of the general communication for the, from the UNICEF, uh, which is very recent. I think this he got in 2017-19. Uh, that's what I come to know. And also for excellence in teaching, uh, Professor Sukhatmi Award uh, that he got in 2019. So these are those who have not kept track of uh, him like me in the recent years. These are the things that have happened. And uh, he is also uh, is a chairman of some of the uh, very reputed um, um, organization and committees. He is in the committee, a chairman of the committee for All India Council of Technical Education for Art, Craft and Design. Um, and also the chair for Typo Day Design Education and uh, Designing for Children. And the uh, topic that he is going to talk about, uh, which is very, very, very uh, uh, close to his heart, and he is the chairman of that committee, which is looking at designing the uh, uh, design curriculum for schools. So um, it's, it's uh, such a honor. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, Professor Ali could take the time to uh, do this session for us. And uh, I don't think I need to uh, give any more background to this. Uh, one thing that I always felt, uh, anything to do with scale is the one that he has chosen as a problem. And uh, I always admire when I fill my uh, fuel in any of these petrol pumps and these BPCL or IOCL, and I always remember him because the entire retail outlet uh, across the country uh, is something that he had, he had uh, conceived. And also the significant scale um, that the kind of problems that it deals with, for example, the electronic uh, voting machine. And um, and this particular one is also something of a very, very significant large scale. So there is always problems that he chooses to uh, address, pick up, which always has a huge scale element. And like all of you, I'm very curious about uh, this particular project of his. Uh, to see how it started and 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 I'm sure in this 30 years of 30 30 plus years of work that he has done there's so much of experience that he has gained working with uh, industry working with uh, leaders in the industry and more so the kind of work he does with the government he has worked with some of the senior leadership in the government and I think apart from the fact that there is a design idea but also there is tremendous amount of experience he carries in terms of how it is actually executed and delivered. I'm like all of you, I'm very curious and very excited to listen to him. And I'm, one of the reasons I always wanted to listen to him is that I always missed, uh, it's about 30 years since I last heard him sitting in a class and I always enjoyed his session. So I always have that element also as part of the session. So without much ado, uh, over to you, sir. Oh, thanks so much, Ravi. Yeah, Ravi and uh, Nimish for organizing this. I'm really honored. Uh, great to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, being in IDC, I've been both blessed and uh, lucky, you know, really. You know, that's, you know, I joined IDC actually because I met Ajanta over there. 
that's the reason i'm there but really uh, you know this is a as you said kindly uh, said that this is a very you know dear topic to all of us many of us not just me you know there's a, a quite a lot of us uh, you know wish uh, it would come true you know it's kind of a dream project in some sense and you know several factors have made it i think going to happen okay we still have to keep our fingers crossed you know that it would happen because it's in the making uh, but it looks like it will happen which is i think a, you know really is something that we need to look forward to okay so uh, just a bit in the background you know i mean uh, my interest in uh, again children again i would to achinta because we did a very nice wonderful project you know in the 90s uh, using new, new technologies that time it was the internet and uh, there was this occasion of the you know uh, eclipse happening from the atlantic crossing over uk europe you know west asia then india and uh, you know ending in bay of bengal and uh, you know there was this idea that can we connect you know people across the path of the eclipse you know so we got in touch with uh, uh, school in cornwall design school in cornwall that's uh, somebody who ajanta knew very well and uh, we partnered with them and it was an experiment to think in in fact we had to build all the tools you know at that point that you know 90s the internet was very slow you know we had to build the chat tool we had to build the uh, tool for exchanging images everything we had to do it except for the email right yeah and uh, as a pilot project we had a school from mumbai and a school from cornwall the children interacting with each other and we gave them a design problem to solve and the uh, problem was very simple that build an installation with something of interest from india and indian children would build something of interest from uh, cornwall so the indian children built a cornish sailboat on the you know our idc circle okay out of very sustainable materials and the uh, children in cornwall actually built an you know elephant which you can walk through out of bamboo again you know and uh, both of them exchanged so many stories uh which they wrote that was the exercise that they created this thing and uh, adults helped them create it you know but the you know what was so interesting about the project was you know uh, the children were given a design task and the enthusiasm the energy levels were so high in fact it was conducted in india after school hours they used to come at 5:30 and they didn't want to go home you know i mean parents were anxiously waiting outside but you know and that was something amazing for them and uh, you know that's when i think the seed of this thing saying that if the design process is somehow involved in our school education maybe the children will have a lot of fun at the same time learn you know i think that was the seed and after that we got interested uh, you know in in uh, doing this picture so you know we've had several interactions uh, through projects at idc through many of my doctoral students working on uh, children's issues i still continue to do that and even ajanta works very closely with children so so that's the background okay and uh, you know i'll share the uh, screen now just one minute this is always a the factor right Yes. Yeah. You can see, right? Yes. yes. I'll try to make it full screen. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to be talking about uh, introducing design in schools. Uh, actual subject we are doing is design thinking. I'll put it in brackets. I'll tell you the reason and innovation in schools. Uh, so it's going to be a subject just like any other subject. Okay. so uh, you know which is a really great thing so uh, you know students will spend around 650 hours you know starting from class 6 to class 12 you know uh, learning about design now how suddenly designers come in okay and we have to thank many things or which uh, 
in the short thing we have to thank the national educational program policy which uh, came out in 2020 and they outlined some skill areas which if if introduced in schools it will prepare children uh, for the professional life outside and they'd be better prepared for that in the long run. Uh, that was the thinking behind it. So just like design, there are several 10 other subjects being introduced. Uh, like for example, at one end there's artificial intelligence, uh, there's also craft design, there's also cooking. You know, so they've identified some skill sets which uh, students can get. It. Okay, so that's the short story of it. And uh, some of, you know, uh, it's mentioned also in the NEP report uh, that design thinking, you know, as a methodology should be introduced in schools. Okay, so, and I think all put together, uh, it uh, that's the idea behind it. So, if you look at it, uh, for ourselves, the story started like this. Uh, sometime, sometime around 2000, you know, late tens, uh, we, uh, you know, we were doing a you know, conference on uh, on uh, designing for children. So we invited a lot of school, uh, you know, people who are connected with uh, teaching alternative methods for teaching in, uh, for children, as well as the design teachers. And we had several sessions. And as an outcome of all these deliberations, a report was prepared on design, design and innovation in schools. And uh, we submitted it to the Ministry of Human Resources then. Okay, it took you know a lot of pursuing, but after about a couple of years, uh, you know, we they came back to us saying that uh, you know the students are already so heavily loaded, uh, we cannot actually introduce another subject. Actually, in the report, we have said that we'll try to integrate design into other subjects. Uh, you know, it would make teaching much better. But overall, it was a negative feedback from that. But uh, you know, we kind of didn't give up. We said that. Uh, so uh, again, we met for another education conference in 2019. So one of the streams was actually design and innovation in schools. Uh, and uh, uh, all of after that, we again submitted it because the, there was new people in the ministry and uh, we sent the report again. And coincidentally, the you know, uh, NEP 2022 uh, came in. Okay, and uh, it identified design thinking as one of the new skill sets which uh, everybody should have. So it kind of coincided and, uh, you know, they set up a national committee for development of this curriculum. Okay, so this was set up uh, middle of last year, 2021. So that's how it came into being. Okay. And the uh, mandate is very nice in the sense that, uh, you know, CBSC schools are part of the ministry so for them it will be initially uh, easy to implement them there are uh, 27000 cbsc schools even if initially even only 2 3000 schools take up and they said you know in the long run if the course becomes successful at least one third of the schools uh, will adopt it you know so that's the you know positive look on this okay so that's how uh, the program started so i'm going to give you an overview of that so, you know we had to do a lot of deliberations to come into this, uh, but uh, some of the things we decided was that uh, design thinking, uh, just like it is being taught in the, you know, design institutes, uh, has to be very interactive with the children. Okay, it is not going to be learned through textbooks, so there are absolutely no textbooks. Uh, it is uh, the whole experience is by doing design tasks, exploring, experimentation you know, experiencing it, and uh, that's how we do it. They get to have a lot of exposures and case studies as examples, and the design process kind of, you know, forms the backbone of it, and uh, they end up learning certain tools. So this is the center, you know, piece of the uh, curriculum system. Uh, now, how do we do this, right? Uh, one of the main, uh, you know, challenges is to create the content so we have uh, you know a team uh, who are expertise who is a combination of designers school experts okay and also people from uh, cbsc as part of the team you know who, who are trying to create this content and we've decided that this uh, contribution to 
keeping the content alive and changing should be constant. So year by year, there'll be another team who will actually, you know, enhance or update the content. And uh, content is being done through teachers' feedback as well as students' feedback. So that's how the content is getting created. Okay, one of the biggest tasks, you know, which you see on the right side is the teachers. It's not that there are design teachers in school. So it has to be some existing teacher who has to learn about design and be able to teach it. Okay, so so it will mean that it will involve a lot of teacher training and learning. Okay, and it can only be done through training. And uh, yeah, you'll have to train uh, teachers who will train other teachers. Okay, to make this possible, we also said that there has to be a detailed, uh, you know, content which is going to be in form of a teacher's manual. Okay. And uh, since we want to adopt uh, uh, the content to uh, the new technologies, we want to make the work online. So it's going to be accessible online. But at the same time, because everybody doesn't have online access and there are schools in remote places, so it can be printed as books or be available as PDFs. And of course, you should be able to you know, access it in all kinds of devices. Okay, one nice thing about uh, design is also that the output is very, very interesting. You know, if they do a, a problem solving exercise, it's something that they can showcase, they can share it with others. It probably, probably end up being part of their portfolios. So we said that the output can also be exhibits which the school does uh, regularly on a basis. Okay, so this is overview of the content. And uh, we looked at many perspectives because I think it's very important that we integrate these uh, perspectives within the curriculum itself. One is that we look at, uh, you know, it celebrates India as the focus, uh, but also there's an international perspective. That means from local to global is an important uh, aim that we have. Uh, children also, because when they start at six, you know, it's about themselves, their families, their societies, and then they reach out when they, you know, get to the higher classes, to public community, and maybe looking at the whole humanity. So the problem task has to go from, you know, self to a larger context. Also, we've decided that uh, it's not going to be human-centered. The last century, a couple of centuries, have been too focused on humans. So we need to you know, be all encompassing and so life-centered is the focus. So that concern a part of also the SDG goals. So so that's something we're trying to integrate within the curriculum. Again, uh, designers have constant, you know, contributed quite tremendously to make this world unsustainable. So uh, again, uh, problems where they become conscious about sustainability is very, very important. So that needs to be integrated into the task. And of course, the design process, you know, to observe, analyze, explore, create something, build on their own, experience it, and finally reflect this part and parcel of the process. And uh, of course, this whole thing would, you know, if the student finally get interested, okay, uh, they're kind of getting prepared to, you know, to be some, uh, you know, contribute in the creative industries. It's very, very important that we do that uh, because we have an opportunity now to do that. You know, so this is again an overview and going a little more details into the curriculum. So it's about 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 12. Okay, and so it's middle and secondary level. Uh, it's mapped on to the NEP objective, objectives. Okay, and uh, in 6, 7, 8, they get an exposure, you know. They can either take it on 6th or 7th or 8th. It's a short exposure of 18 hours. Okay, so it, that exposure is intended to create an interest in the student to perceive the subject. Okay, so which they can do, then in 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th, it becomes like any other subject. It's 160 hours, you know. So the overall vision, we, we you know, again, this is after a lot of talking and uh, debating. It's to explore sensories, uh, uh, cognitive abilities and social abilities. Okay, it's to create awareness through discovery, experience, and reflection. Uh, it has to create nurture their curiosity and uh, uh, their exploration abilities, uh, foster creativity and innovation in the long run. Uh, they should be able to identify problems in their own surroundings and be able to solve it. 
okay, and uh, apply design thinking process and methods to it, and learn the fundamentals of design. Uh, that's the overview your vision uh, for the program. In terms of competencies, uh, very important to you know inculcate observation skills in children, okay, because it becomes a tool for them to think about their surroundings and the environment. Uh, communication skills, again, that's a 21st century much needed skill. Uh, bring sensitivity to design, identify problems and be able to analyze and you know explore and then solve it and then probably prototype and build objects. We also wanted to map it with the, you know, very nicely the UN has, uh, you know, come out with the SDG goals. So quality education, gender equality, you know, innovation, you know, uh, you know reduced inequalities and, uh, yeah, you know, reduced consumption, life below water and life on land. I think we are very noble goals to have it in the curriculum. So if you look at the overview, you know, starting from 6 to going on to 12th and if it's focused on exposure and discovery in the beginning, it's more of a short exposure, then goes into, you know, building some of their concerns, skills and sensitivity. Uh, then in the 10th standard, uh, they get into creative problem solving. And in the 11th standard, they look at different options for design and they try to solve problems together. And the final 12th year is focused on application and uh, being able to execute it. This is an overview. I'm going to go through, you know, very briefly with each of them. So, for example, the exposure program in 6, 7, 8, you know, you have the design thinking process as a structure, okay? And, uh, the, the, you know, uh, what we have for them is there's introduction, there are exposures which are made in form of slides. There's a task book which uh, both the students and teachers have it. There's a teacher manual which is an extended task book, you know, with details for the teacher. There's also an assessment and feedback mechanism so that we can always improve what it is. So, for example, you know, these are some of the tasks. You know, they deal with elements of design and story creation. Okay, so for example, they will make a puppet using basic elements of design, create a character out of your imagination or the draw the world in your palm. So there's a story creation and elements of design. Very short task uh, to get them interested in that. Or uh, an excess in form transitions and inspiration from forms in nature. So they have to create form transition and then document forms from nature. Uh, a third one is uh, idea sketching and product exploration. They have to think of a sundial you know, portable sundials, catch a lot of uh, images of it and then, you know, soft prototype one of them. Uh, the last one is a design thinking process, uh, uh, which comes in. So we said the uh, problem identifies that, identify problems around your school environment. Okay, so they go through the ideation, creative concepts, and they do a final present. It's a group exercise. Okay, so this is short, and these tasks are not frozen in time every year we've decided that they should be changed okay so it can create new interest in the new students uh, okay, so there's going to be a team which will always be part of the curriculum which will do it so if you look at it you know we've uh, said that there has to be design skills sensitivity design thinking process and the design project itself so you can see that you know the six seven introduction to elements of design, form transition in photography, introduction to sketching, introduction to design process, creativity methods, and solve simple problems. Okay, so going on to ninth and 10th standard, the top bar is the ninth. So I'm just going to touch upon that. Okay, so for example, we feel that observation is a very important skill that uh, children should uh, have. So we have fundamentals of documentation and an introduction to photography, how you can use a tool for actually capturing uh, your surroundings. Okay, fundamentals of 2D design. So you have 2D basic explorations and uh, then you introduce the design process, the first part of it, you know, how do you observe and, uh, you know, find a problem. Okay, so it's an observation project at the end of it. We are also going to follow a semester system. So this part, which is typically 2D with uh, 
this ends at the fifth semester. The next one is, you know, you start with sketching for ideation. Okay, so basically getting them to know that everybody can sketch and, uh, you know, uh, and ideate and uh, followed by fundamentals of 3D and then goes on to the problem analysis and with a project at the end of it. Okay, and in the 10th standard, uh, it goes on to design for moving images, fundamentals of story creation, you know, and uh, introduction to creativity, and then they have a creative exploratory project at the end of that particular semester. And in the next semester, they followed with fundamentals of communication, because again, 21st century is skill. Uh, they get introduced to sustainability and design. Okay, so they can uh, build some products or systems at the end of it, uh, basic prototyping methods, and uh, end up with a complete design thinking process project at the end of it. Okay, so 11 standard, if you look at it, it's, you know, you get into areas of design. Okay, so we introducing fundamentals of publication design. Okay, uh, fundamentals of moving images, so they can make a video film at the end of it. Uh, fundamentals of information design, mapping and visualization, okay, followed by, you know, uh, it may be a service design kind of project, which is the uh, first semester from 11 standard, and the next semester they get into 3D, so they do product design, uh, digital, you know, interface design, uh, fundamentals of game and toy design. We want to introduce this because I think it's a wonderful, you know, topic to do that. Ends up with the, uh, you know, product design collaborative project. And also they get the feel of, you know, what it is to do a startup project, you know, how it can be innovated. Okay, and in the 12th standard, they get into doing problems at different levels. The first one is a personal, you know, design project. You know, it's about personal spaces. It could be a, you know, textile design or something that you wear, you know, to going into at a social space, so you design something for the home or the office environment. And the third one is a public space uh, design. So they get to do it. And now you can actually think of problems from not just your surroundings, but maybe even around the world. You know, the problems can extend from very personal problems to problems which uh, affect uh, uh, the whole humanity itself. Also, we have an intention of introducing Indian knowledge systems you know, something that can be inspired from this. This is a very big debatable subject. It's still in the making. Nothing has been finalized. But for example, if you can design elements of nature with inspiration from from our own, you know, knowledge about it, uh, you know, it could be a nice beginning for the students. Okay, and then it's followed by a, a long design project. Okay, so that kind of uh, completes the 12th standard. Okay, so that's an overview. And it's important that design is learned in not in the same way. You know, it's the experiential do it and build learn. It's playful, joyful experience. You know, students get involved in problem solving. It's always nice to work together, collaborate and cooperate and do work. And classrooms need to be somewhat converted into studios so that students can work together. So there are no, it's exposures, there are no textbooks, uh, local contextual problems explore, experiment, creative options, uh, modules instead of hourly classes. Okay, so the process that we followed is that uh, lesson plans after this is figured out, uh, we do the whole distribution, competencies, learning aims and objectives, uh, map it with SDG goals, uh, do the modules and the sub-modules, then we have to do the exposures, tasks and the references. Uh, we also build the assessment criteria and feedback, uh, which goes into the teacher's manual, and it can end up as an exhibit uh, plus a portfolio plus validation is very very important. So they can also end up as an online document documentation, uh, and uh, we have to think of the next task for the next year. <clears throat> so we, you know, if you look at the overall uh, just the projects. You know, starts with school environment, waste generated in school, artifacts for the primary classroom, you know, design for public concerns, uh, concern for sustainability and environmental issues, communication problem, you know, product design problem, 
personal space, social space, public space, Indian knowledge systems, and a capstone project. You know, so these are the bigger tasks. We also slightly made the design thinking process uh, suitable for children. So it starts with observation, understanding. We also have the regular terms of the design process over there. Uh, ideation, build and do. And the last part is reflecting on what they have done. <clears throat> we also, you know, convinced and kind of changed the assessment grading. So there is no fail grade, you know. The lowest is that you're a beginner, uh, you're developing, you're being promising, proficient, excellent, outstanding. This is how the grading uh, is going to be. That is what the, you know uh, they'll get. We've also created the rubrics for assessment because teachers are going to teach design and assess design for the first time. Okay, so we've said that it's going to be based on. You know, for each task, we'll define what is beginning, what is developing, what is promising, proficient, excellent. Okay, so they can follow this matrix to grade them. Uh, the students also get these criteria, so they know what needs to be done. We asked a lot of questions. It's been, you know, it's been now almost on the eight, you know, this is the eighth month of our deliberations in this, uh, you know, developing its curriculum. Okay, so first is no textbooks, only workbooks. Okay, so yes, it's been a great. Okay, uh, normally there's 40 minutes per hour. Okay, so we wanted longer times, like three hours, but uh, finally we waited on three 40 minutes, so it makes a module of two hours in the school curriculum. Uh, what is the ratio of work to home? Uh, because a lot of projects have observation, you know, things like that, which can be done at home, you know, fact finding and stuff like that. So. We've uh, agreed on a ratio of two is to one, okay? And uh, the structure of the workbook is based on objectives, learning activities and outcomes and evaluations, okay? Also, uh, we have to understand that access to technology may not be there in all the schools because some of the schools are in rural areas and uh, we have to enable them. So even if it is available online now, it's going to be implemented, uh, they should be way to implement it even in school. Schools may not also have facilities for workshop and things like that. So even without that, they should be able to think and do these problems. Okay, task needs to be interesting, exciting, contextual and, you know, inspiring. Okay, and uh, can we set up new tasks and problems every year so it becomes uh, contextual and relevant? And uh, yeah, and assessment are based <coughs> on tasks and not on the final examination. Okay, so there are larger questions which have not really been answered. Uh, how do you make curriculum suited for disinterested teachers? Okay, how to get them motivated? Yeah, that's a big question. Second is how to make the curriculum not be at the mercy of coaching classes. Maybe changing helps, but again, uh, kind of unanswered questions. Okay, so this is how you can help us. Okay. Uh, so first is uh, uh, everything is open and changeable. It's in the making. Uh, even if it doesn't change now, it can be changed next year. So we are seeking inputs. First is uh, being part of the review team, uh, either for the workbook or the teacher's manual or both of them. Okay, so any volunteers will be, you know, we'll be glad to have them. Being part of the content de development team, if you're really keen on this, key to suggest yeah, further tasks and projects, which needs to be done every year. Uh, to try out the tasks and projects with students and give feedback on improvements, uh, you can even do it, you know, we'll, we'll send you the completed workbooks, uh, you know, task books. You can even try it out on your, you know, your children and give us a feedback that would be great. Okay, the last one is a very important thing. You know, we don't know how to convince the parents because many times it's the parents who make the decision in school what the children needs to learn okay so you can be an ambassador to take up for dti as a subject for learning in schools okay so that's roughly you know the presentation okay so these are the members so we have a you know team here uh, which is uh, meeting we meet every week we've been doing it for the last eight months okay there's also a supporting core team Okay, so you can see that uh, they're made out of, uh, you know, experts from school and design. 
you know so it's been a really nice team which has been working towards this okay but you you have to understand this is in the making okay and the second very important thing is that you know in fact this is truly done first time in the world you know uh, there is there is design and you know technology being introduced but it is more of a technology than design uh, but design and uh, innovation as part of the uh, school curriculum where they do from the secondary school to the higher level you know is really being done so we are also in an area where we don't have examples so we are trying out so in that sense it's experimental okay so thanks a lot okay so if you would like i can just very briefly show one exposure and uh, you know glimpse of the you know task book it will just take me a couple of minutes we still have time okay so just running you through so this is for example for class 6 uh, you know this has been developed by a team of uh, school teachers uh, designers uh, put together okay uh, what is design you asked the question uh, first and there's a discussion with the students okay and it's an exposure presentation so you have many examples that you give okay and uh, again it's for discussion so mainly you have all these examples you know nota tabla state bank logo and uh, start a conversation with the students and uh, yeah and they have to really debate about what makes it design and then the answer is here you know which makes uh, you happy it's sustainable solutions it's good looking works well this is class 6 right uh, you have to create something new okay you have to try to be able to solve a problem and it's one by one you do that you know and uh, give couple of examples for example this is how we eat our food this has come from a teacher you know uh, if we regularly you know breakfast from south india but if you want you know small it is you need to design that uh, particular vessel which makes it okay the same case is you know if you want to make use of your space in interesting ways like you want a double bed okay and then you can either put it under or you can put it over so that's how you create variations okay then we move on to elements of design okay so the normal elements and then go into each one of them a single dot a random dot uh, bindi makes a big difference if it is not there so you start debating and when you see dots uh, many other places lines for example can be in many ways it can be like a hand drawn right and you have many types and uh, they also have different expressions okay? so the students again debate about what is soft and what can create confusions okay again with lines for example you know you see it in smileys if you put vertical curtains uh, they can uh, make it look like uh, it's a high this one we stand in a line if you want discipline uh, whereas a zigzag line is you know denotes fun and adventure you know shape also you go into shapes okay it can be seen in all kinds of places so yeah yeah and again lot of types of shapes are there so some examples of it again with respect to color so very simple you know introductory introduction to color again yeah there are warm colors and cool colors and uh, textures right yeah so this is a very short you know 10 minute introduction but i think the discussions and all that will take it about half an hour for the students yeah. so roughly that <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I just show you the right, right. Yeah. So this is, you know, in the making, create six task book. You know, so that is the task book for them. So this is the overview of the subjects we just went through. Okay, and uh, the diagram I showed you is part of the task book. Okay. So it starts with what is design. Okay. So we have a quote from Nathani here. Yeah, other people. okay who is a designer what is design thinking i think this is because the subject is new right who is a design thinker what is the design thinking process okay we also put the process here what is innovation 
you know, what are the overall vision and aims of uh, design thinking and innovation curriculum if given it here, you know. Then the overview of the modules matching with the SDG goals, uh, competencies and objectives. Okay, this is how the grading is going to be. And we also defined the assessment criteria, uh, references and stuff like that. So this is the first, you know, topic elements of design and story creation okay so this is how it is so here we introduce aim of the module what is the task how do you form groups what is the sequence what is the design thinking process involved how are the sdg goals mapped onto it then the task itself how to create the perfect character using basic shapes this is the other subtask world in your palms Okay, then you have reflection. There are questions that you ask after this. Then this is the assessment. They they can assess themselves. So yeah, so we've given the <coughs> assessment criteria, and they can assess themselves. But at the end of the, this thing, there are the references. Then it moves on to the second one, like that. You know, so this is how it is. You know, so it just gives you a rough idea of what it is. Okay, so this is yeah, this is the final one. Introduction to Design Thinking Process and Environmental Design Project. Okay, so that to make their school, you know, find problems around their school. Yeah, they go through ideation. Yeah, we've given some very simple charts to do. Okay, creating scenarios, final design presentation, then again, assessment. Okay, and this is the assessment criteria matrix, okay, which is both for the students as well as the teachers. Okay, for each of the tasks, we have defined this. Okay. And then uh, there's also a student feedback form as well as the teacher feedback form for each of the tasks. Okay. So roughly, this is the team which has done it. Okay, so there's a curriculum team which did that. Okay, there are also credits to other people who have worked on the project. Okay, so roughly this. So thanks a lot. Uh, really thank uh, again Ravi and Nimish for you know this opportunity here. I'm really glad to share it with uh, so many of you. You know, uh, thanks so much for listening. Yeah, over to you, uh, you know, Nimish and Ravi. Yeah, yeah it's any a, questions? I'll be glad to answer. Sure, it's, it's a very exhaustive work, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, questions and ideas and probably. Sure interest from the audience here just want to before i open this uh, to the audience just want to ask you one thing if any of us want to collaborate uh, for those uh, four or five areas that you listed there um, how do we how do we go about it do we reach out to you or is there a yeah i think right now there's no official email so you can just write to ravi at iitb.com okay. Okay. okay so if you do that i'll respond okay. Yeah, please uh, feel free to. So I, uh, yeah. There are a lot of questions in the in the message, so I'll read out the first one. Oh, sure. And this is from uh, Achita Rao. That the introduction of the word innovation, was it elevated? Was design not enough? Just the word design. Yeah, so so there's uh, th that's why I put something in brackets, right? I didn't really explain it. Okay, so, uh, you know, our earlier report was just design and innovation in schools. Okay, uh, design by itself. Uh, see, the argument goes like this: design is which is a lot of people. Okay, especially you have to think of the parents who are taking a decision. Okay? Uh, innovation makes it a little more, you know, uh, better than just design. Okay, uh, I'm, I agree with you. Just design in, design in school should have been enough, right? Uh, but that I think we can do it if it is established and everybody knows what is Okay, so design and innovation, this is an argument which we did about, uh, you know, almost 15 years back. We said that that is uh, good. This is another very interesting factor. Okay, uh, design and innovation, uh, you know, at the at the broader level, okay, the ministry thinks it's, it's, it's a very important subject that has to be introduced in almost all the disciplines. Okay, so there's an initiative 
you know, just like there's only one course which is mandatory now, which is environmental science. Okay. Along with that, they think design and innovation will be introduced in all the undergraduate programs, whether it's law, medicine, you know, technology, they want to do it. That's another initiative. But it sounds better. And uh, what happened really was that design thinking, you know, if you look at it, it's become a buzzword, right? And many of us from the design community are not so much in favor of it. You know, I'm not, you know. But I think if you look at some conversations with a lot of stakeholders, right, they seem to make the tone seems to sound better, you know. And at this point of time, where we have to have people take this up as a subject, it seems to be a better option. You know, maybe you can review it after a couple of years and, uh, you know, go to design and innovation and later on maybe just design itself would be all right, you know. Ravi, at the moment, they have introduced design thinking as a vocational program, right? 12th, 11th or 12th. As I see the syllabus yeah. here, TY. I mean, and, you know, they are saying the job uh, prospect is assistant designer. I mean, I don't know how they introduced, uh, already is existing, right? Assistant design, I was shocked actually when I saw it. Yeah, so, so those one are... One year, one year program. Right? Yeah. Standard. So, so uh, there are a lot of issues with that, you know, Achyub. Uh, was it recommended by you people or...? No, no, no. it was how done was by themselves. Okay. I mean, yeah. like that, they introduced a lot of programs. They yeah, artificial thinking yeah. and yeah. all those things. Uh, yeah, so yeah. they introduced this, that. This year they are introduced. Yeah. yeah, but this is uh, right through. See, the, it's, it's seen as a... You know, it's it's from primary standard to higher standards. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you look at the design thinking curriculum, it's through textbooks. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, intention is a little different. And design doesn't come there. That design thinking. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But I was wondering how. Yeah. It was but and one of the recommendations they've asked us to is also how to, in you know, put design you know, process to teach other subjects. So that's uh, that's something which the committee will do to the schools itself, you know. Yeah. So, and the teachers are also being trained in this, you know, to, to already the training has started for design thinking to adopt it as a process in, you know, teaching as a methodology. Okay. So that's the reason all the three terminologies are there. You know? Yeah, but then, uh, see, Primary education, especially is a state subject, and then uh, NCRT, CBS is a entirely different. You know, we have both the boards working together. How is that they are going to enforce it uh, to the NCRT? Has no right, right? If I belong to the state board, I don't have to manipulate. I mean, new education yeah, so policy is it like mandatory at all? No, see, yeah, I don't think it will work through mandatory means. Uh, but I think no. by by NCRT, CBS, you know, they can enforce CBS schools, all of them, right? Right. Then you have got another one, you know, ICICR or whatever it is. There are three major brands of education, primary education in our country. If you are not no, uh, mistaken. The what, the what? NCRT is one, CBS is one, right? Then State Board is another. And the third, we have another, uh, this thing, I put the name of that. There are three different, you know, independent bodies. Now, so, where are you going to influence and how? Yeah, so so the plan for the from the ministry is like this, uh, that they are going to invite all the state board people i think the meeting is scheduled for next next month you know it's just going to be a slow process yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. you know so i mean they you they'll be you know told what the subject is okay how to implement it and it's going to be a slow process it's not going to happen overnight you know so mm -hmm. so that i think you know i I'm, I'm just being optimistic okay. you know yeah and yeah. 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 yeah so i think one needs to be that you know yeah Nimesh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unmesh makes a comment okay. and he says that this is successful in our schools, then maybe we don't need design schools. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Unmesh, we are just making them interested in design. Okay, they are not going to be anywhere being designers at the end of it. It's not possible. Right? <laughs> just to so you're saying that we, need more we will need more design, design schools. schools then. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's also happening, right? Actually, I, I was, you know, in one of the conversations with the ministry, I was mentioning this, you know, in when early 2000, uh, China enabled 1000 uh, art schools to become design schools. You know, we were all feeling terrible. We were thinking we had that time hardly some 10, 15 schools, right? We were thinking 
So it will take India ages to, you know, get there, right? Uh, but I think if you look at this, this is like a coup, you know, if you, if they can actually implement it in schools, nothing like it. You know, even if they don't become designers, you know, they'll take the essence of it to whatever profession they are doing. You know, they'll, they'll have this confidence that they can make a difference, you know. So I think it will go a long way. Like uh, one set of people who go, go for JEA, I think one set from here will actually go for UC. I mean, I think what you mentioned, Ravi, in terms of learning other subjects through design methods, I think that's going to be extremely valuable. You know, right. I mean, I sure. Nimesh, any more questions we have? Yeah, there's a question of Sanjukta. The, yeah. This kind of assessment that you're suggesting, how do you think it will sit with the other assessments that we have for science and other subjects? Yeah, so one of the things when they saw this, they said, why don't we adopt it for others also? You know, so mm -hmm. let's see, you know, see, this is new, right? Yeah, so uh -huh. if it is adopted for even other subjects, okay, it's, this is very good when there is a little bit of discrepancy. It's not one answer. You get it, no? And they also want to move away from that one answer to, you know, that there are many possibilities, you know. So then the then the assessment matrix sits extremely well, you know. Yeah, and it can easily apply to science. I mean, sorry, English, history, uh, subjects like that. Yeah. I think. So there's Ravi, a question. Yeah. Are two sides. Okay. Okay. I don't know what the context of that is, but the question is: Is it possible for a class six student? Yeah, so I'm, uh, my question earlier. Uh, communication the, design before class yeah, 11. 11, yeah. I think there's a lot of issues on that depth of comprehension abilities, right? Prabhu? Sixth standard syllabus I saw, and then what you're talking about, the you know the interpretation of the lines and the elements of design. How did you make sure that they could achieve that? I mean, did we really do any experimentation yeah, right? so before we come see, to this? See, no, no. See, it is uh, not then, like... See, this is okay. more like an exposure. Please remember that. Uh, well, nice. you know, okay. They're not going to become experts in this. Mm. Okay. No, I don't that they have it with them and a bit of it they learn. Because mm. you see, it's 18 hours. 18 mm. hours is not much of a time. You know, it's nice. They'll do this task. They'll enjoy it. So then I think why... why some of it. Why well, one of the that could be why cover everything in each standard kind of thing. You know, I mean, I see this, you know, in a different level. So you could have probably split into six, seven, eight, and, you know, different elements and then nine, ten. No, see, thought, the thing know. is, uh, there's an issue there. You know, they want, they want more number of students to have this option. You know, most of them, they realize almost around 60% are going to take the regular subject. Okay? Mm. But they will take at least one small module so you have a choice of taking it either on the 6th or 7th or 8th. Oh, I so see. Okay. You got it. No? Yeah. So what we'll do is the difference between 6th, 7th, 8th is just the task. Mm. You know, but the content will remain the same. It's so it is not that 6th that every year we have this uh, subject. No, no, it's not a growth. It's not from 6th, 7th, 8th. 6th, 7th, 8th is just one module to give them an exposure. So if they get interested, then they can take it in ninth. Then it's okay. a... In a, it's a growing okay, model. Okay, okay. That's yeah. what I missed. So from ninth onwards, you build up on, you know. Okay, okay. I think Aswankar has a question. Yeah, yeah. So, so Guru yeah. Prasad, actually, I'll just, so, sorry, eight, eight minutes. I'll just finish this question, one or two more. So, Guru Prasad says that um, something is being done as part of Atal Innovation Mission. This is being done as part of Atal Innovation Mission. And it is also being made into 22 vernacular languages. So is that the same thing? Is it a different thing? See, it's it's a different thing. Okay. okay. But, you know, what they have intention is that they want to build these uh, centers in almost all the districts. I think Talukas, really. Okay. Where they'll have uh, facilities. I think Guru Prasad comes from that, right? Yeah. Where they'll have facilities for prototyping, for example, one of them. But they'll also have libraries and things like that. Because each school <laughs> will not have it. But if there's a center which is accessible to all the schools, right, then it can reach a lot of persons. Okay, so there's a program of enabling this, I think, almost in every taluk in the country. Okay, and some of them have already been set up, uh, you know, so used by students from any of the schools in that program. Yeah, that's part of it. That's uh, Ravi, uh, can I answer just an extension of that? Yeah, sure. 
Punya, go ahead. Yeah, Punya, go ahead. Punya, you're not very clear, so we yeah. go over to... Yeah, I think he's not... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an excellent initiative and I like the uh, work that is being done. I have just one query. Why? There is no reference to word technology. Did I miss it or you, it, it, it's not intended to be there? Because you will see that design is shifting over to a very technology intensive kind of an approach in terms of content as well as in terms of delivery. So why was that not included? Actually, the intention is not to exclude it, you know, because it's part of the tools and it can be part of the problem solving process. I don't know. This is something which we can debate again. You know, uh, one was that there's a big connection because the design and technology is a subject which is offered in the UK, right? And it has got established, you know, so we didn't want to replicate that. You know, we wanted to put emphasis on innovation and uh, the design process. So I think that's why we've taken it off. So if I can... Innovation is very closely related to technology now. Yes, yes. That's so true. if I can add to this... Yeah, it's yeah. not that we've taken it off, it's subtly there, you know. Yeah, we've not... Uh, yeah, this is Sumail. But that's a good point, like we can think about it, yeah. yeah this is Sumail, am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes sir. I think if uh, we uh, emphasize more on technology, we will be excluding a lot of other subjects. So at this point of time... No, the reason partly is also because, you know, they have uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, all these are getting introduced. There are a lot of techie subjects coming into school education. Okay, so, so that's one of the reasons, you know. So, for example, uh, against design or robotics and AI, you know, uh, which the, which is an option which the students will get. In the so we yeah, can but again, to... it's something we can debate again. You know, how much of technology we need to include. You know. No, I think that's a valid point about technology. Uh, Punya, you wanted to add Punya, earlier to what Professor Ravi was saying. Punya. Okay, if Punya is not available, I have one question from Prashant. Yeah, Punya is back. And Punya is back. Says, uh, what is the plan to train school teachers to under, undertake these courses for the wards? Yeah, that's that's the biggest challenge in all this. You know, absolutely. You know, I mean, the way that this is something which we are not very good at. The plan of action is from, from the CBSE who had experience in this. Okay, so uh, yes, we are going to train, you know, let's say, next number of school, you know, teachers in this. Uh, who who they going to recruit from being good teachers, right? That is planned. Okay, and they in turn will teach other teachers. Okay, so that's how it is planned. Because you know, even they said initially in the first year itself, there'll be at least some two to three thousand schools which will be designed. Okay, so you have to prepare that many number and it can go up to 10,000 schools. This is just talking about CBSC. Okay, so they have to put a mechanism in place. And we said we'll we'll help in whatever way can, we can do it, you know. So it has to be that way. And in the long run, I think, you know, this will also become an option for design students to take up teaching in schools. You know, it's an option that one can look for. Because if you look at the number of design schools which have come, in our country, right? It's it's also quite a nice option to probably take it up in the long run. Yeah. So we have one question from Prakash. Prakash says, uh, "Has this been tried as a pilot? And if yes, what was the feedback?" No, we are going to try it out as a pilot. It's it's being planned. Yeah. What they've done is that the school teachers have tried, you know, bits and parts of it here and there. Okay. We've got feedback from that. Okay, but it's. It's not like a regular pilot. We'll, we'll do that. Definitely. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, as far as uh, there are some interesting mechanisms that exist in school. One of them is science club and science comp club competition. Now, it's quite possible that we can find an equivalent of that for design 
because a lot of students keep initiative to participate in that and schools right. also try to support that so then you are less teacher dependent because teachers start preparing their students for sending their entries to these competitions and all that so that's one possibility second one is if you thinking of using any alumni help then some kind of a weekend workshop may be a good idea with children if that is possible okay. there are difficulties in that but uh, i'm sure that some student might want to spend some time, i mean idc students might they want to spend some time with school children on weekends you know saturday sunday or something ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಟ್ಲೈಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್
you know, semester long assessment here. Mm. You know, even for 12th, it's not going to be a problem. Okay. And as you said, finally, everybody will accept it here. Mm. You know, so that is something which happens in, let's say, two, three subjects, then we'll finally accept it. So, uh, Ravi Krishnan, over to you. Yeah, yeah, we are six minutes past our time, and uh, I know it's a very. Uh, I just before I close, I think Punya, uh, are you? Are you? Are, I mean, is he back? I don't know. Uh, he had a question, so I just wanted to make sure that. Okay, yeah, I think he's trying to speak, but uh, yeah, we can't yeah. hear him. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think it's a great beginning. You know, I, I the way that we are exchanging looks like there is so much. To, I mean, it's all in our uh, heart, actually, not just you, Professor Ravi. I think it kind of touches all of us. And I, I, I think I can see a lot of uh, excitement and energy in finding ways to actually know more about it and participate. I think it's a fantastic beginning. And first of all, thanks for actually showing uh, this like a preview, even before it, it has got into a shape that you're saying formally you're going to take it further. And uh, there can't be a much better time than this, where the idea is still in the, almost in the fag end of formation, yeah. but still very open for uh, this one. And I think that that's excellent. And the kind of uh, detailing is, is superb. And, and I'm sure that uh, the kind of thoughts, it reflects the kind of thoughts that are going to be packaged, not only the details, but also packaged it for the session, for whatever deliberation that have happened over the years, is simply amazing. And uh, hats off to you. And, and I mean, very excited to be part of this. I'm sure on behalf of all of us, I would like to thank you for taking your time and doing this. And uh, we'll be very, very happy to to participate. And I'm sure we'll we'll reach out to sure. you. And uh, whatever little that we could do to make this a success, uh, which is probably one of the historic things, as I would say, because you're taking something close to I mean, something of a scale which is so 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 big. Is, is amazing and um, yeah. thanks to Ravi thanks to all the participants and we had a huge number of we were touching 100 this time so it's, it's a, that shows how how excited people are to <laughs> know about yeah, this subject is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh, the recording of this will be available I mean uh, I'm most likely I will post it by tomorrow uh, those who missed it will get a chance to listen to this and uh, we also have a series of talks lined up. So next Tuesday we have uh, a session uh, by by uh, by a product manager from Zoho. So and there's a lot more interesting talks coming up. And thanks to all of you. Thanks, thanks everyone, and have a great rest of the week. And uh, good night. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Thank you.